This week in Jamaica Now, PNP in turmoil, while the party chairman and three vice presidents have resigned with immediate effect. The YO president, Crystal Tomlinson, has also stepped down. A day earlier, the Mandeville mayor withdrew his resignation as the council chair. COVID cases ticking up, parties galore. The prime minister warns that tighter containment measures could be reimposed. 10 of 15 missing fishermen found drifting in Honduran waters. Two Jamaicans held in Florida after boat crash could be deported. Elderly man gets life sentence for the murder of his teen sister-in-law with whom he had a relationship. And remember the 17-year-old girl beaten at a party? Her mother details the latest. I'm Damian Mitchell and this is Jamaica Now. Political watches are keeping a keen focus on the People's National Party, rocked by four resignations weeks ahead of the annual conference scheduled for September. Chairman Philip Paulwell and Vice Presidents Dr. Wickham McNeil, Mikhail Phillips and Damian Crawford have all stepped down with immediate effect. In a joint statement, the four said the move was prompted based on the recognition of the risk that may arise from another internal election before the wounds of the last presidential elections are adequately healed. Party insiders, however, say the resigned members wanted to have had three supporters of the former Lisa Hannah Camp elected as vice presidents. It is understood that the team that supported Mark Golding insisted that only two candidates from the former Hannock team should seek to be elected. The talks broke down and the chairman and the vice presidents decided to step down. Meanwhile, PNP President Mark Golding has accepted the resignations, saying he's committed to building unity in the political organization. And word came shortly after those resignations that PNP YO President Crystal Tomlinson has also stepped down with immediate effect. Tomlinson in her statement said she would not continue to serve where there is a wavering commitment to integrity. And the developments in the PNP came a day after the mayor of Mandeville, Donovan Mitchell, withdrew his resignation as the chairman of the Manchester Municipal Corporation. The mayor had tendered his resignation, saying it was clear he did not have the confidence of the majority of councillors. It is understood that following the resignation, Mitchell was contacted by the hierarchy of the People's National Party. Sources close to the mayor said he decided to resign after Thursday's infrastructure committee meeting in which Mitchell believed he did not get the support of councillors. Mitchell had suspended an anti-vending program in the town which was being enforced by municipal officers. It is reported that he has concerns about the conduct of some municipal officers and wanted a review of the program. Harbor councils voted to resume the program even before any review. COVID cases are ticking up in Jamaica and deaths too. This week, the overall case count inched up to 50,983. The positivity rate also ranged between 6% and 11%, and deaths continued to increase with 16 being recorded on Saturday. Meanwhile, parties are continuing galore, many in breach of the established guidelines. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has warned party goers flouting the COVID-19 rules that tighter containment measures could be reimposed. According to the Prime Minister, many young people, especially those returning from overseas, are showing scant regard for the COVID-19 protocols. He said on Monday the Cabinet received a report from the Health Ministry showing a slight uptick in the infection and positivity rates, as well as hospitalizations. Videos have also been making the rounds showing the Trafalgar Division Councillor Kari Douglas partying without a mask. Ten of the 15 Honduran fishermen who went missing at sea last week have been rescued. They were aboard the rainforest-owned Fallen Star fishing boat en route to Jamaica from Honduras when signals to the vessel were lost. The 10 fishers were found on a lifeboat in Honduran waters on Thursday. An oil tanker was sailing from Port Esquivel in Jamaica to Guatemala when the men were spotted. Roger Lynn, the Director of Marketing and Corporate Affairs at Rainforest Seafoods, said spirits are still high, although the whereabouts of the remaining five fishermen are still unknown. Deportation orders have been issued for two of the seven Jamaicans who were held trying to illegally enter the United States when the boat they were traveling in crashed in Florida last month. The two are being processed by the United States Border Control at the Chrome Detention Center. The five other Jamaicans remain in custody and are being processed at different facilities in Florida. According to highly placed sources at the center, the two facing deportation are expected to be repatriated later this month. The Jamaicans were among some 17 people, including nationals from Haiti, the Bahamas, Venezuela and Romania, on a boat that almost ran aground in Pompano Beach in the Broward County area in Florida in June. It was reported that the boat left the Bahamas for Florida. 
The 61-year-old St. Anne man who pleaded guilty to the murder of his 18-year-old sister-in-law has been sentenced to 25 years in prison without the possibility of parole. Winston Jarrett is to begin the sentence immediately following his 28-year sentence for the 2012 murder of 65-year-old Daniel Wishart. Wishart was stabbed to death following a dispute over payment for a painting job. In handing down sentence this week, Chief Justice Brian Sykes cited Jarrett's criminal history, which dates back to 1978. Jarrett has also had several convictions for housebreaking and sexual offenses. 18-year-old Juliana White was found last year with her throat slashed. Jarrett later confessed to the murder of the teen with whom he had a sexual relationship. He said he was driven to kill her because she was involved with other men. Kaylin Dowdy, the 17-year-old girl who was last November severely battered allegedly by a group of women, has now lost her memory. Her mother, Vanessa Buckley, told the Gleaner that the teen will not be able to give the police a statement. When the wounding case was mentioned in the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court in June, the police had indicated that they wanted to collect a statement from the teenager. However, when the case was called up in court this week, the police reported that there had been no improvement in the teenager's condition, who remains on a ventilator. Over the period, Dowdy has had nine heart attacks. There are five co-accused. 22-year-old waitress Timon Williams, 33-year-old Nadine Aldridge, who is unemployed, 28-year-old call center representative Shakina McLeod, 26-year-old sales rep Christiane Lewis, and 45-year-old laborer Yuland Vassal. They remain on bail pending the return to court in September. And that's it for this edition of Jamaica Now, your weekly review of the big news stories. Send us your comments at onlinefeedback at gleanerjm.com. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Jamaica Gleaner and on Facebook at Gleaner Jamaica. Like this video on our YouTube page, subscribe today and turn on your notifications. I'm Damian Mitchell and before we go, dark days for straight George Wilson residents near Craighead in Manchester. We've been querying about light, the electricity. Some people came sometime last year, three sets of them came on major and go around and come back but nothing since that you know we haven't heard anything because they they, they, they fixed the road the road was very rough nothing couldn't drive but since it fixed now they came so we we, we expect that we would get some poles from early last year yeah. i don't know if it's because the covid thing come in make you know yeah. a young lady around there she brought them in. What was the price, Paul? I'll tell you about the wire. One point something. Yeah. One point something, not two. One point. Something. Yes. For the wire. And we would have to buy the wire. The people then would have to pay for the wire to go around there. But they would supply it, the poles. And they will, would supply the pole. But <clears throat> it's rough. You find that money there. It's not pretty, not pretty.